Hey, you're watching UATV News. My name is Ina Kosinska. Good evening. Ukraine marks the day of resistance to the occupation of Crimea. This date was approved a year ago by President Volodymyr Zelensky. On this day, seven years ago, a large-scale rally from the unity of Ukraine was held in Simferopol. Thousands of Crimeans then prevented the local parliament from making a decision to change the status of the peninsula. It was seven years ago. On February 26, 2014, in Simferopol, a large pro-Ukrainian rally was held. It became the last attempt of preventing Russia from occupying the Crimean Peninsula. There was no one demanding secession of Crimea loudly, and only some worked for the cameras of the Russian propaganda channels. <laughs> There are no separatist slogans today, and there are no plans to consider any issue concerning any secession. Don't escalate the situation. In some minutes, thousands of people with Ukrainian and Crimean Tatar flags gather in front of the Crimean parliament to support of the country's territorial integrity. And their voices sound louder. Tens of thousands people stood for the country's territorial integrity and only marginal groups were against. I often say, and we should know it, that the next day on February 27, the special forces of Russia says the administrative building in Simferopol. That day the streets were already empty. Seven years ago the time of fear and horror started there, and it still continues. The whole world saw a completely different TV pictures that the Kremlin was counting on. Heavy military equipment moved freely across the Crimea. The armed military wearing no insignia are the so-called little green men. The Russian military set up checkpoints in the isthmus of Perekop and Chongar Peninsula, thereby cutting off the overland communication between Crimea and mainland Ukraine. Along with the Russian military, these checkpoints were guarded by another groups of armed people who had arrived in advance. On that day the session didn't happen, and in the night the Crimean parliament building was sized by two groups of military, only 110 people. In the afternoon of February 27, the Supreme Council of Crimea, whose premises were already controlled by the armed people, announced the pseudo-referendum on joining of the Ukrainian peninsula to Russia. Seven years later, neither Ukraine nor the civilized world recognizes the pseudo-referendum, organized by the Kremlin at gunpoint. Crimea has been and will remain an integral part of Ukraine. At present, the Ukrainian government is doing everything possible in the international arena to deoccupy the peninsula as soon as possible. Reported by Roman Smoller, Inna Mazurkevich, Yulia Krychkova, UATV News. It's time to return home. With these words, the president of Ukraine, Volodymyr Zelensky, concluded his address to the Crimeans. The head of state compared the peninsula to the heart of Ukraine, which Russia pulled out seven years ago. To speed up its return, the president signed a decree supporting the Crimean Tatar language and protecting the rights of residents of the occupied peninsula. Seven years ago our heart was turned out. We will never forget who did it and we will never forget who allowed it. Some argued that they had turned our heart out lawfully and politely. And now, holding it in their arms, they sincerely wonder why Ukraine is offended, why it does not want to have good relations, why there is so much hatred, why Ukraine cannot forget and forgive this. What does it take for Ukraine to be able to smile happily and sincerely again? Everything is simple. Its heart must be returned. The Crimean Peninsula must be returned. The international community supports the sovereignty and territorial integrity of Ukraine. Crimea is Ukraine. Diplomats and officials from Canada, the United States, Germany and other countries publish their statements on Twitter using this hashtag. EU High Representative Josep Borrell also made a statement on behalf of the 27 EU countries on the seventh year of the occupation of Crimea. In particular, he called to investigate the crimes of the occupation authorities on the peninsula. Seven years on from the violent illegal annexation of the Autonomous Republic of Crimea and the city of Sevastopol by the Russian Federation, the European Union remains steadfast in its commitment to Ukraine's sovereignty and territorial integrity within its internationally recognized borders. Residents of the peninsula face systematic restrictions of their fundamental freedoms, 
such as the freedom of expression, religion or belief and association, and the rights to the peaceful assembly. Journalists, human rights defenders and defense lawyers face interference and intimidation in their work. The Crimean Tatars continue to be unacceptably persecuted, pressured and have their rights gravely violated. The Ukrainian foreign ministry calls on the international community to increase pressure on Russia due to the occupation of Crimea. It is emphasized that the Russian Federation is intensively militarizing the peninsula and is persecuting the Crimean Tatars. Ukraine continues to unite international efforts to deoccupy Crimea. Ukraine is grateful to its allies and partners for their consistent and effective support in the struggle for the restoration of our country's territorial integrity. The international community should increase political and sanctions pressure on Russia to persuade it to liberate the occupied Ukrainian territories, release all political prisoners and abide by the international court ruling. Medvedchuk circle records. Is it a scandal or a fake? Ukrainian media have revealed a recorded conversation between well-known politician Viktor Medvedchuk, who was recently fallen under Ukraine's National Security Council sanctions, and Vladislav Surkov, former representative of the Russian president. Is the recording real and what have the parties discussed? Our journalists will tell you more. Yet another scandal with politician Viktor Medvedchuk. A recording of the telephone conversation, which happened seven years ago, appeared in the media. The voices are said to belong to a sub-sanctioned Ukrainian politician and former representative of the Russian president. The men discuss plans for the supply of electricity to Crimea and Viktor Medvedchuk's role in the mutual release of prisoners. MPs urged to check the authenticity of the recordings. We hear voices strongly resembling politicians Surkov and Medvedchuk. They discuss various issues, including commercial ones, related to trade with the occupied territories. We can understand that Viktor Medvedchuk agreed on certain decisions with Surkov, which he has so far also agreed with former President Poroshenko, who gives certain instructions to the authorities. A significant element of these talks is the fact that Mr. Medvedchuk has actively cooperated and coordinated his actions with Petro Poroshenko. I think that these events should be the subjects of not only political discussion, but also a comprehensive investigation, because both of these gentlemen are current MPs who are trying to polarize society, as they have usually done in all previous years. Political expert Ihor Petrenko is sure that the conversation record is real. Poroshenko had all evidence that Medvedchuk was cooperating with Russian structures. He lobbies the interests of Russian business. Besides, Poroshenko used to say that the security service of Ukraine did not provide him with all the necessary information to impose sanctions. The security service of Ukraine is currently studying these records. The press services of the opposition platform for life and the European Solidarity factions do not comment on the situation at all. Reported by Roman Smoller in Namazurkevich UA TV News. Creation of a modern educational space and conditions for IT companies, as well as the development of infrastructure and tourism. The pilot project is being launched on the basis of the Svetlohirsk and Liman territorial communities in the Donetsk region. Minister for Reintegration of the Temporal Occupied Territories of Ukraine Alexey Reznikov told this. According to him, the project will increase the investment attractiveness to the region. If we form the right conditions, give certain motivations from the point of view of tax legislation, customs legislation, stable legislation, if we give guarantees against political and military risks through the creation of a certain insurance fund, the investor will come, and the first will be our Ukrainian investor. Besides, the community development projects will also involve participation of the small and medium-sized businesses. Seven out of 1,338 people vaccinated against coronavirus supported the consequences after the vaccination. According to Deputy Minister of Health Viktor Leshko, no serious deterioration was recorded, but all appeals are being investigated. At the moment, most of the vaccinations were made in the Cherkasy and Ternopil regions, as well as in Kyiv. Meanwhile, the daily incidence of COVID-19 is on the rise again. 8,000 new cases were recorded.
We can say that the risk of new cases is quite high as well as the rate of hospitalizations in terms of 100,000 citizens. New cases are being registered in Ivano-Frankivsk, Vinnytsia, Zakarpatia and Chernivtsi regions. In mid-February we expected the increase in the number of patients with influenza, which led to peak loads on the healthcare system during the coronavirus epidemic. A unique operation was carried out in Odessa. Ukrainian ophthalmologists were the first in the world to employ the method of high-frequency welding of biological tissues. They saved the eye of a 21-year-old patient. Such operations are put on stream for thousands of patients who require them. Our correspondents have details. Six months ago, Zoya Perohova was diagnosed with a tumor. She was in danger of losing her left eye. Doctors of the Filatov Institute for Eye Disease and Tissue Therapy performed an operation and managed to save her vision. Now Zoya travels to Odessa from Krasnohorivka for checks. I had a secondary retinal detachment with a neoplasm, a neoplasm in the left eye. Due to such operation, it was possible to cut off the tumor without removing the eye. I'm grateful that they did it. The unique technique was developed by Odessa ophthalmologists together with the staff of the Paton Institute. Its principle is similar to welding. Using high-frequency electricity, they connect biological tissues. The first patient was 21-year-old girl with inoperable tumor. But the doctors managed to do a miracle. We can state the fact that we were the first to remove a large hemonioma. We managed to do it due to a unique method. This disease is very rare. I mean our case. The tumor grew to a big size. It filled a third of volume of the eyeball. This is a lot. Unfortunately, there are very few such cases. The Schweber's syndrome is very rare with only one patient in 50,000 a year. The operation of such complexity is the first in the world. Most often in such cases the patient's eye was removed because of the risk of bleeding. We already have requests from other countries concerning the technology. A lot of people from abroad want to come to study to our clinic, but we cannot accept everyone, only the most talented. We have a lot of young people from abroad and from Ukraine. Now the specialists of the institute are preparing articles for the world-famous ophthalmological publications. The video recorded during the operation will present a unique achievement at world conferences and congresses. Reported by Roman Smoller, Anna Horodensova, Arsene Podusan, UATV News. That's all for this hour. More updates on our official website, YouTube, Twitter and Facebook pages. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.